businesses in medium and small size businesses. And the second market is the college worker. We think that's the knowledge worker of tomorrow, and there are over 11 million college students in America alone. Now, the telephone was the first and only really desktop appliance, and we think Macintosh can become the second desktop appliance for these tens of millions of people. Because of the 235 people in America, only a fraction know how to use a computer. Macintosh is for the rest of us. And we need to communicate this message to those knowledge workers and college workers. And to do that, we are launching the largest advertising campaign in Apple's history, which will premiere on the Winter Olympics starting February 6th. And I'd like to show you five commercials now. It's more sophisticated, yet less complicated. It's more powerful, yet less cumbersome. It can store vast amounts of yesterday, or tell you what's in store for tomorrow. It can draw a picture, or it can draw conclusions. It's a personal computer from Apple, and it's as easy to use as this. Macintosh, the computer for the rest of us. Introducing Macintosh. It does all the things you'd expect a personal computer to do. It does a lot of things you wouldn't expect a personal computer to do. And it does some things no other computer has ever done before. Of course, to do all this, you will have to learn to do this. Macintosh. The computer for the rest of us. genius of Macintosh, Apple's newest personal computer, isn't its 32-bit microprocessor, or that it captures the power of a mainframe on a board 10 by 10 inches, or even that it costs half as much as computers half as powerful. The real genius of Macintosh is that you don't have to be a genius to use it. Macintosh, the computer for the rest of us. You're about to see a few people learn to use the newest, most advanced business computer in the world. If you know how to point, you already know how to use it. Macintosh, the computer for the rest of us. is a highly sophisticated office computer. And to use it, all you have to do is learn this. This is Macintosh from Apple, also a highly sophisticated office computer. And to use it, all you have to do is learn this. Now, you decide which one is more sophisticated. Macintosh, the computer for the rest of us. This is KSTS TV 48 in San Jose, your computer connection. Those ads were prepared by Shiat Day, our agency, the same people that did 1984. Over 70% of all the computers used in education in this country are apples. And, and we feel pretty good about that. We care a lot about the educational process, and it reflects a bit of, about what, what our values are as a corporation. And it's also an incredible leverage point for the Apple II. Now, most of those are in kindergarten through 12th grade. A year ago, we went in search of about a half a dozen colleges that would use a large number of personal computers in 1984, large being at least 1,000, campus-wide. Well, we didn't find half a dozen, we found two dozen. And today I'm really pleased to announce the Apple University Consortium, formed of those 24 colleges and universities around this country. And they're the opinion leaders. They are the Ivy League. And they collectively have placed orders for over $50 million today of Apple 32 Supermicros. And this is the list of colleges.
Stanford, Harvard, Dartmouth, Princeton, Yale, Brown, Carnegie Mellon, University of Chicago, Columbia, University of Pennsylvania, it goes on and on. Every major university in this country that's going to be using a large number of personal computers next year chose Macintoshes and leases. And a ton of them are doing courseware development, and all of them are leading the way for the other 3,000 colleges in America. And they are telling us that Macintosh is the ideal campus computer. And we're really excited about this program. Now, when we first designed the Apple II in a garage, what most people don't know is we designed it to be built in a garage. And we thought if we ever built 50 a month, we'd be doing great. Now, we've obviously uh, exceeded our expectations by over 2,000 times in the month of December. But never before Macintosh has a personal computer been designed from the start to be built in the millions. From day one on Macintosh, we kept manufacturability in mind and have designed it as the first personal computer to be built in the millions. And I want to take you very briefly through how a Macintosh goes together. We first take the front bezel, which is the most precisely tooled piece of plastic that Apple has ever manufactured, and to it we affix a stamped sheet metal part and the cathode ray tube. Next, we attach the single board containing the entire high-definition video electronics and the entire lightweight switching type power supply. Next, the three and a half inch disk drive is attached, followed by a shield around the disk drive. Next, the single 10 inch by 10 inch board containing the entire 32 bit digital graphics processing computer is slid into the metal infrastructure and the cables are attached. And with four screws, the rear case is then put on and the Macintosh is tilted up for the first time and ready to go into an automated 24 hour burn in, after which the keyboard and the mouse are added. And the challenge for us is to do this once every 27 seconds. Now to do this, in addition to designing the machine, in the last year and a half, we have designed and built the machine to build the machines. We have invested over $20 million to build the computer industry's first automated factory in Fremont, California, overlooking Ford and GM. <laughs> the factory is based on the concepts of just-in-time delivery of zero defect parts, and it's a manufacturing process which allows extremely high volume production of extremely high quality products. And were it not for this shareholders meeting today, we'd be building over 500 Macintoshes. And Macintosh was developed by a small team of incredibly talented artists. And the rest of Apple supported this core group of about 100 people, and they were able to leverage the resources of a billion-dollar corporation to create their dream. And I have never in my life had the privilege of working with such fine and talented people. And the experience of Macintosh has changed all of, the, all of our lives who've had the, the privilege of working on it for the last few years. And we think it's going to change the millions of people, their lives, the millions of people that buy them in the next few years. And we made a, a multimedia show, really for ourselves, that I want to show to you now that captures some of the spirit of this group. And I'd like to show it to you now. We started in a very tight-knit, small group and we had this dream it was it was sort of us against the rest of the world but we started working on it and us five six seven people believed in the dream and eventually it sort of grew the machine is uh, based on the Motorola 68000 microchip when we started working on Macintosh we really wanted to get a unique synergy firstly there's 128 K bytes of dynamic RAM there's 64 K bytes of ROM no compromise. Do it right. Do it really good the way you would want it, and then figure out how to make it cheap so people can afford it. The display is a bitmap display.